What's up pet people and plant people? Today I'm going to be doing a video over what may be the easiest house plant ever. At least in my opinion it's the easiest house plant ever. And it has so many variations. I'm going to be going over this because it is not only a wonderful house plant but it is an amazing enclosure plant as well. I'm going to be talking to you guys about its basic care and on how to include it in your reptile slash amphibian enclosures to make it a centerpiece that you will never ever want to get rid of. So if you're interested, please keep watching. Alright guys, so getting right into the video, I'm going to start off by talking about the lighting requirements of the pothos plant. Now, most places that you look online give a rather blanket statement saying that most pothos do good in bright, indirect lighting. While this is true, I have noticed from my personal experience that the pothos variations with lighter colored leaves tend to do better in a medium to lower indirect lighting situation. Now, by different leaf colors, I mean the leaves of a golden pothos, a Hawaiian pothos, a jade, um, a silver satin, things like that tend to have darker leaves and vines. As you can see in this picture here, my golden has very dark leaves with the bright, beautiful yellow splotches all around them, and the vines are a thick, dark green um, vine that you have and that you see here. Now this is different than my marbled queen pothos as you can see right here. These leaves are very light colored. They have a lot of a light neon, almost white portions on their leaves and the vines are rather light as well. Um, these portions of the vine right here tend to be a bit closer to a golden pothos color of vine, but overall the plant has lighter vines throughout. This also goes for my mandula, which as you can see has a lot of variegation, a very light leaf color, and a light vine. Now, for pothos enjoys and other things like that, I kind of just tend to keep them out of direct, or I try to keep them out of the bright light anyway, um, due to the fact that the leaves have a lot more white and a lot more variegation on them, so I don't want them to burn. I'm mentioning all of this because I have noticed um, through my experience and my couple years of having pothos variations, that the darker the leaf can handle the brighter light. The lighter the leaf tends to burn a bit easier whenever it comes to um, lighting. And again, this is just my opinion. You can follow that blanket statement that is online. It can work well, but this is what works for me. Moving on from lighting to watering. Again, this kind of goes on a experience based knowledge that I have. Um, if you look online there's a kind of once again blanket statement that pothos should be watered every 10 to 14 days and while this normally rings true for the bigger plants or for the bigger pots this isn't always true if you just have a fresh cutting or if um, your soil doesn't drain as well. If you have a not very well draining soil or if you have a smaller pot that needs um, less water or if you water it and it retains water really well, then I maybe wouldn't water it every 10 days. I'd water it closer to the 14 day range. I tend to let the top inch or two of mine dry out before I put any more water into the plant. Um, it's just a thing I do to ensure that we don't get root rot. As I said, these plants can handle a decent bit of neglect, so you can let them dry out a little bit more than you would, say, a monster asoni or even my philodendrons. I kind of keep a little bit more moist than I do my pothos. Um, these guys, as I have noticed throughout the years, it's, it's pretty hard for them to get root rot. Not impossible, just pretty hard. So you can eyeball how much watering they need based on how the soil looks. Um, but again, a good 10 to 14 days is, is a decent um, timeline in which you should be checking them if they need watered again. Moving from watering to fertilizing. Now, as I've mentioned a couple times already, these guys can handle a decent amount of neglect. You can put them in a darker area than they need, you know, you could let them get a little warm, you can forget to water them for a bit, they'll bounce back relatively well. 
but over fertilizing apothos can be detrimental to the plant. I say this because from experience, I have learned that pothos do best whenever they are fertilized um, twice a year. I fertilize them twice a year. I use the Fox Farms Big Bloom Liquid Fertilizer. You mix it with water and then you pour it into your plants. It's really good for all vining variations I have found. Um, 10 out of 10 best fertilizer I have used and found. But it is best to fertilize these guys twice a year during their growing seasons. So I will fertilize all of my pothos with a not heavy pour, but I will... I will use a little bit more fertilizer than normal in the spring and then I will fertilize them one more time near the end of the summer just before they kind of slow down their growing for that fall winter season. I do not recommend over watering or over fertilizing whenever it comes to the fall and winter just because again they slow down in growing it's a seasonal change that normally happens um, over fertilizing them can cause burning can cause rotting can cause a lot of different issues that you might not be able to solve unless you completely um, unpot clean out the soil like clean the roots clean everything involved and that's just a hassle that you don't want to do and you might not notice until it's too late to fix whenever it comes to pruning and or cutting a pothos it is completely up to you as the pothos owner i personally don't really prune mine or cut mine back at all unless i'm wanting some more cuttings out of them um, they are a vining trailing plant so if you have them hanging they can go down quite a ways as you saw with my golden pothos it goes down a, I'd say a couple feet it goes down a bit. Um, if you don't like it looking like it's coming out or trailing down you can kind of fold them back into the pot sometimes and secure them with bobby pins or plant pins. Um, or if you don't like that, some people connect them to their walls and have little hooks and have them going all over the walls. If you don't like that, you can also put a plant stake in there and have them kind of trail up the plant stake. There are so many different things you can do with the uh, pothos plant, but since they are a vining or trailing variation, a lot of times they will end up coming up and out of the plant if you have it hanging. Again, this is completely personal preference. They don't need to be pruned in order to grow thicker or bushier or, um, you know, you don't need to deadhead them like you do with some other plants. These are completely like grower's choice. It's completely up to you as the plant owner on how you want to maintain your pothos plant. As I mentioned just now, whenever I talked about pruning and cutting, I do sometimes cut mine back if I want extra plant cuttings from them. Now, whenever you do a plant cutting um, or propagation from a plant cutting, I tend to use the water method whenever it comes to pothos. This is hands down the easiest method. Um, you can watch them pretty well. I have noticed that whenever I do soil cuttings or soil propagations for pothos, they tend not to do as well as a water propagation method. There are a couple different ways you can do the propagations, but again, I'm just going to go over water real quick because it's the easiest and in my opinion, it's the most effective for a pothos plant. So, Whenever you are cutting a pothos plant or you are wanting to get a cutting for propagation from the pothos plant, you are going to want to take your vine or your plant, wherever it is, and you're going to cut right here after the node. The node is the part that you are going to want to ensure gets into the water because that is where the new roots will sprout from. Normally, if you have a really long vine, you can get a decent amount of nodes and uh, leaves from them. I tend to do one leaf per node, or with these new cuttings I have, these are my Pothos Global Greens. These are brand new cuttings I have. As you can see, I um, have a couple nodes here. This one, in my opinion, wasn't large enough or like strong enough for me to cut right here and put into the water. This one, because it had this new beautiful little leaf off of it, I decided I didn't want to disrupt that either. So I went three leaves down the vine and got this node right here. I cut it right here before the other node just so that it has, in my opinion, whenever I cut, I try to cut right before the node of the other um, leaf so that it can still grow and look pretty and not have this like random slash in the middle of the vine that you leave there still. 
So this one, same situation. I have one, two, three, four nodes on this one, but I wanted this node right here because it's a bit thicker, looks a bit stronger, a bit sturdier. Um, so I have these two freshly cut uh, propagations right there. Um, and then I'm going to quickly show a photo of a ready to plant propagation. This is a cutting of my golden pothos. As you can see, those are some long, thick, sturdy roots. I tend to not want to replant it until I have at least two or three little roots coming off of the said plant, just because I want to ensure it has a higher survival rate. Now after you have them ready to plant and out of the water, I then transfer them to a smaller plot smaller pot such as this mandula pothos here. Now whenever transferring from water to soil I tend to keep the soil a bit more damp or moist if um, if you did the water propagation I tend to keep it a bit more damp just because it it will struggle if you go immediately into letting it completely dry out and then letting it you know giving it water and then letting it dry out and giving it water that plant has become accustomed to constant water in its roots, so you need to slowly wean it back to a normal watering schedule. Um, as I said, this one is clearly very damp, and oh, I actually have the root coming out the bottom here, but it's a pretty damp soil that I keep it in, and it is doing very well. Normally, once I have two to three um, new leaves, I will start going back on the watering with this one or I will start letting it dry out a bit more. Um, I just want to make sure that I get a couple new leaves out of it whenever I first plant it, and then it should be good to go to a normal watering schedule. Okay guys, so getting right into the enclosure part of the video, I'm gonna quickly and briefly cover this. I'll go into it more whenever I'm planting my pothos into my new cladarium setup that I have, um, but for pothos, you need to ensure whenever you transfer them to the enclosure, just like any other plant, that you are maintaining the same lighting and the same moisture soil level that you have them in beforehand. Now, if you have a cutting that is propagated in water, they will tend to do better in a higher moisture level environment, um, such as you can put them right into the soil of a really, really wet frog enclosure versus the drier type of soil. One of these I would probably put into a crested gecko or a bit um, drier soil uh, enclosure that you may have. And for lighting, once again, you can have different different levels of lighting for each variation, but whenever it comes to moving it from one location to another or introducing it into a frog or reptile enclosure, you need to ensure that you have the same level of lighting in that enclosure or provide it the same level of lighting in that enclosure to what it had before going into the enclosure. You can shock a plant and that can cause death or stress, which can then cause death. Um, if you take it from a low light room and then shove it in the very back corner up near the light of a crested gecko enclosure that can shock them and eventually cause them to die. So while they are great enclosure plants and they have strong stems and can withhold a decent amount of weight for frogs, you know, crested geckos, emerald tree skinks, things like that, you do need to keep in mind how you go about transferring them to that new location. Alright guys, so that's the end of my pothos care guide. I know it was kind of quick and it didn't go into a lot of detail, but in reality pothos are very easy to care for and they don't need a lot other than what I mentioned. Um, whenever it comes to lighting, bright indirect light for the darker leaves, medium to low indirect light for the lighter leaves is what I found works best. Watering every 10 to 14 days or measure the soil moisture and decide for yourself. Um, whenever it comes to fertilizing, twice a year, heavier during the spring, a little bit lighter during the end of the summer just to promote the growth during those growing seasons. Lay off a fertilizer in the winter and or fall seasons just because that's when slow the growth slows down a decent amount. Um, I will have the fertilizer I use linked below. 
Pruning and cutting is grower's choice. If you don't want to cut them back, don't. If you do, go ahead and cut them back, but make sure to use those cuttings as propagations for other plants that you can end up putting into pots and you just, they're one of those things. If you have one, you can have hundreds of them. Um, but as you saw, they are incredibly, incredibly easy plants to care for that are great in reptile and uh, amphibian enclosures as long as you transfer them properly. Once again, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it wasn't really animal-based and more plant-based. I want to get into doing both because animals and plants go together. Literally, they, they thrive off of each other and it's just an amazing little um, ecosystem you can make and I really want to get into that with you guys, especially as I do more bioactive enclosures. So if you liked today's video, please make sure to hit that like button and give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys for watching me and coming back and supporting me after my inconsistency with filming. Really, really appreciate it and um, I can't wait to do another video for you guys sometime soon. Sending you my love. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye. Mm -hmm.